left the others behind! Easy, easy, easy! What do you think you're doing? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest bloopers from classic Hollywood movies. You haven't got a chance. Why, you dirty... For this list, we'll be looking at notable mistakes from films of the classic Hollywood era, which we're defining as before the 1950s. Are there some other bloopers we missed that others need to know about? Let us know in the comments! Number 10. Playing Santa Claus, Times Square Playboy When someone is yelling something nonsensical in your face, it can be hard to keep your composure. Listen. I've got some bad news for you. In this scene from Times Square Playboy, Gene Lockhart is getting up in Williams' face. In a funny little voice, he accuses the other man of playing Santa Claus, pronouncing Santa like Santy. And something of the delivery was too much for William. You're playing Santa Claus. That's what you're doing. Playing Santa Claus. Listen, and in a minute... <laughs> Hey, maybe just the mention of the jolly guy gets him in the mood to belly laugh. And we gotta commend Warren William for keeping it cool as long as he did. Well, I guess I just can't help making a noise like a double truck ad in the movie magazine. Number 9. There We Are Boys, Dive Bomber. The very thing. Five men at arms talking to group. They'll break the fall beautifully. Errol Flynn was one of the greatest physical actors of his time. But even the best of us must fall sometimes tumble as it were. Thank you, Commander. You took the words right out of my mouth. In this blooper from 1941's Dive Bomber, Flynn is sitting in the back of an airplane. His character has to make his way up to the front seat. That proves harder than one might think. Flynn launches himself over the front seat, but gets stuck midway. With his torso hanging one way and his legs hanging the other, Flynn makes a wisecrack about his derriere that makes us laugh every time. There we are, boys. Ass and all. Number 8. Pratt Ball, Cowboy from Brooklyn. Far it be from us to criticize anyone trying to look good while riding a horse. But after one fall off your mount, you'd think you'd get over it. Hold your liquor like a man at This blooper from Cowboy from Brooklyn has it all. During the first part of the clip, a man on a horseback rides out, shoots a gun twice, and promptly slides sideways off his horse. Things get worse from there. The second time, he gets through five gunshots before he slides off the horse in a very ungainly manner. Ho, ho, ho! I'm Wyoming Steve Gibson! It's a lie! I'm Wyoming Steve Gibson! The slapstick and silly physicality of this blooper is too good to pass up. Well, now, heck, Jane, that's nothing to kid a fella about. You should have seen the dirty looks they were giving her. Number seven, wig falls off. Submarine D1. The toughest thing about wigs? Making sure they stay on. <laughs> this dismissed take from 1937's Submarine D1 proves just how hard it is to keep hair pieces in place. In this scene, George Brent gives Pat O'Brien a swift shove, knocking him to the ground. In a fit of frenzy, O'Brien pushes himself up from the floor and promptly, accidentally takes his hairpiece off his head. Damn it. There it goes. <laughs> the way O'Brien takes this moment in stride adds to its charm. No wonder that Brent, relatable king that he is, can't stop laughing in the background. It's obvious, as you say, that you are a victim of circumstance. Number six, getting any lately? The voice of the turtle. Sometimes one accidental gag provokes another. And in this next clip, Ronald Reagan and Eve Arden keep feeding off each other's mistakes. I thought tonight we might just have a quiet little dinner, not go anyplace afterward, uh, sort of concentrate on each other. In the voice of the turtle, the actors begin to flirt as they catch up. Arden, leaving out a very important word in her question, accidentally bypassing coy flirting and getting right to the point. You have been getting any lately? Overtime, you mean? They laugh it off and keep going. Reagan takes the next faux pas, turning the scene once and for into something quite modern. You're looking blooming. Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Well, I don't know whether you've laid any... Lay. <laughs> you know, it's none of my goddamn... The mistakes themselves are hilarious, but we love Reagan and Arden's interplay more than anything. 
Number five, never interfere. The man who came to dinner. Monty Woolley may have misspoken here, but that doesn't mean he's wrong. I'll grant you a one minute interview. What do you want to know? His character, Sheldon Whiteside, is never one to mince words to begin with. But while sharing a scene with Betty Davis in The Man Who Came to Dinner, Wooly has a little Freudian slip. You know that one of my cardinal principles is never to interfere in anybody else's wife. Why? <laughs> Listen, it may not have been the right line, but the man has a point. The slip itself is extremely funny, but nothing beats Davis's reaction to her scene partner's mistake. Don't look at me and say that! <laughs> Davis was, of course, an amazing actress, but her laugh puts a huge smile on our faces. Number four, I can't work around here. No time for comedy. Jimmy Stewart was one of the most important and popular actors of his generation. Even today, he's one of the main classic Hollywood actors that everyone can still pretty much recognize and name. So it's fun to see that even old pros can still get distracted. You can't come in here. Gay's working. Oh, I just want to pop in and get my book pop out. And no account must he be disturbed. In this scene from No Time for Comedy, Stewart finishes up a rousing moment with an angry storm out. As he walks away, he realizes he's a lot closer to the camera than he anticipated. Well, I can't work around here. Oh, you're following me. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. It's the classic Stewart warble that really gets us. And it's refreshing to see that even seasoned actors can make mistakes. Want a paper, sir? Take those. I'll take the tabloids. Number three, bucket to the face. The bride came COD. You're being kidnapped! Kidnapped? That's just about it. Oh, but uh, I can't be kidnapped. I'm just about to be married. Well, I admit my timing was bad. Back in the day, this pairing of Betty Davis and James Cagney was destined to make a major splash. But in this outtake, that expectation is taken quite literally. When Davis gestures with a bucket full of water, she accidentally bops Cagney in the face with it while wetting him. Ketchup. <laughs> Mustard. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Even for a goofy comedy, that isn't exactly what the scene called for. We see Davis quickly apologizing and shaking it off in true Hollywood pro fashion. But it's also quite interesting to hear her voice shift out of character in this quick blooper. Well, I'm practically a national figure. What do you think you're worth? At least a hundred thousand. Number two, nozzle mishap. Women are like that. Oh my dear, don't give me a shock like that again. What is it, Terry? Accidentally spraying water in someone's face will never not be funny. In this clip from Women Are Like That, Pat O'Brien and Kay Francis make a silly mishap that make things much funnier. While in the midst of discussing their future together, O'Brien starts to make himself a drink only to find that the nozzle isn't necessarily aimed at his glass. O'Brien accidentally directs the spray right into Francis's beautiful face. That's right. <laughs> she handles the inadvertent spray with as much poise as possible, but her reaction is still adorably funny. Seeing these beautiful classic movie stars be just as silly as us is a treat. All in the day's work. A good day's work, Tommy. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Potty Mouth, Devotion. No one could curse quite like Olivia de Havilland. I am not lost, oh Christ, son of a bitch. Who's happy? Green light. Questions of motivation arise. <laughs> What the hell's been happy about getting a wife back? I'm a surgeon. Green light. Errol Flynn takes his work seriously. They don't need to justify their lives, I do. I'm a physician. I'm a surgeon, God damn it! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Shall we dance? Each dawn I die. He's going in and out. Just like that. Clever boys, these reporters. Write a piece about me when you get out. It's always a fun time when the scene goes in a different way than you were expecting. But in this clip from Each Dawn I Die, we can't imagine anyone was expecting this. Does he dance? One of the best. When does he get time to practice? George Raft runs at James Cagney, looking for all the world like he's about to punch him. Then, a beautiful orchestra kicks in, and the two suddenly begin to waltz. 
Without even a moment's hesitation, the two actors playing officers behind the duo also join in. But it gets better still. Say just a minute, this is supposed to be my dance. It's a nonsensical blooper, but one that makes us laugh out loud every time. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.